Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. Thank you all for joining us for this exciting session. It's been a while since we've done one of these. Uh, we had a couple sessions that were postponed from last week. We're really sorry about that, and we'll be rescheduling those as soon as we can. Uh, sometimes our guests are unable to make it, uh, especially in these uncertain times when there's a lot doing and a lot going on. So we will be rescheduling those sessions as soon as possible. Uh, in addition, we will be posting in the next day or so a schedule for all of our Facebook Lives for the upcoming month, for the month of February. We have a lot of incredible sessions lined up for you. So we hope that you will mark them all down in your calendar and that you'll be able to join us for a lot of them. We hope to have you with us in the audience. I see that we have people joining us from near and from far. So whether it's really early in the morning or late at night for you, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let's see, we have Amy from Missouri and Janet from Virginia, Victoria from England. We have Jane from the UK, Moira from Australia. Uh, so thank you for joining us so late. And uh, we really appreciate all of you tuning in and also letting us know where you're joining us from and uh, seeing how far these Facebook Lives can reach. It's really incredible. So we have a fantastic session lined up for you. Before we get to it, I'll just let you know about a draw that we have for today's session. We will be giving away a MyHeritage Complete Plan. So that is the best plan that we have to offer at MyHeritage. It'll give one lucky winner unlimited access to over 16 billion historical records. And of course, we're adding millions of new historical records every week. So you can stay tuned to our blog to see all the new collections that we are updating all the time and adding to our uh, vast treasure trove of collections. In addition, the complete plan will give you unlimited access to the MyHeritage photo tools. It'll give you unlimited uh, family tree size, uh, advanced DNA features, and much, much more. So really a, a really uh, incredible gift that one lucky winner in our audience will win today. So in order to enter, all that you have to do is leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know about uh, some a uh, feat of research that you were able to make using MyHeritage, uh, you know, something that you were able to find or uncover and against all odds, whether it be uh, through a historical record, finding out about a physical trait uh, about one of your ancestors, uh, you know, from a military draft card, something that you had never seen before, or whether it be um, tracing the small town where your ancestor lived and being able to go back to the village and uh, visit the home where, where they grew up uh, or any of these stories, we'd love to hear them. So leave us a comment in the comment section and uh, we hope to award one lucky winner with a MyHeritage Complete Plan at the end of today's show. So looking forward to seeing all your comments come in. In addition, of course, feel free to leave comments throughout today's show. Uh, we love your questions and comments, and we'll be taking some questions at the end. Uh, so now let me introduce our speaker. We have with us today, Lisa Alzo. She's a returning guest on our Facebook Lives. We love having her uh, join us. It's always such a treat. She is a writer, instructor, an internationally recognized lecturer. She typically specializes in Eastern European research and writing your family history. She is the author of 11 books and hundreds of magazine articles. Uh, she is also an online educator and writing coach through her website, Research Write Connect, and we'll put a link to that in our comment section. Uh, and she has developed the Eastern European Research Certificate Program for the National Institute for Genealogical Studies. So uh, let me bring her on to say hello to all of us today. It's bright and early where she is. <laughs> so we really thank her for joining us at this time. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Esther. Thanks for having me back. And hello, everyone. Happy to be back again with my heritage. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. I love doing these and love to connect with people around the world. So um, I'm really happy to be back. 
And it's a topic that we haven't covered before, so super exciting. Yeah, I am too. It's interesting, you know, the different tools that we use in our research and how so many of them can be used in combination to get us answers. So that's that's why I like mapping tools. Fantastic. So should I bring up your slides and you can Absolutely. jump right in? Okay, yeah. Great. I'm going to have to go full screen when you do it. Sure. Let me just bring that up. Okay, there we go. We can... Yeah, we're all good. Great. Well, again, welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Lisa Alzo. Happy to be here talking about using mapping tools to research your ancestors. And we've probably all used maps at one point in time for our genealogy research because it's so important to understand place. You know, they always say location, location, location. And that is so important in genealogy. And so uh, most of us actually, you know, we, we start off trying to locate, you know, for those of us researching immigrants, you know, here in North America, especially, you know, for my research, we want to pinpoint where our ancestors came from, the, the ancestral town or village. And so we're probably, most of us are familiar with historic maps, atlases, gazetteers, which are gene geographical dictionaries that tell you many details about a place, you know, including how many churches were there, you know, what religions were um, dominant at the time where your ancestors, you know, lived and worshiped. And so maps are really important for a lot of reasons. And I'm not gonna cover this morning um, using, you know, uh, historical maps for research and and uh, and and getting uh, you know different types of maps at different map sites. I wanted to focus on a couple of specific tools that have helped me with my research, and I hope they might be useful for you. So, first of all, you know why maps, and as I mentioned, first of all, we do pinpoint places. But maps can really give us that direction for our research. It's, you know, they're, they're a compass. You know, and, you know, printed maps are, are wonderful, but we can find a lot of maps online as well. And, and that really helps us to understand where we need to go, um, especially if you have, you know, many different ancestor, ancestors to research and if they moved around. So maps are really important, uh, but they help us to also make connections. So, you know, if you understand, you know, where your ancestors were from, hopefully by using, you know, some of the modern day tools that we have, you can connect with cousins, relatives that you didn't know that you had, and maybe you can even make a trip back to your ancestral town or village, as I have done three times to my ancestral villages in Slovakia. So making connections. Um, also, understanding those migration patterns for our ancestors. So when we do genealogy, especially when we research people, you know, who left their homeland and well, went to other places, we talk about push-pull factors, you know, what pushed them out and, and what drew them to a new place. And so understanding the migration patterns can help us, you know, understand you know, where the records are for our ancestors, because you know, records are kept on a local level, you know, they're guided by laws and, 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 and a sense of place. So we have to understand, you know, both modern geography and historical geography to understand where the archives are, the repositories and the other places that we need to go for those records. So tracing a migration pattern is really important. And for me, you know, I, I'm very visual when I research. So I like photographs and I like to see things, you know, all on, on as a big picture on a big screen. And so maps can also give us a visual timeline. So that's what I want to talk a little bit about today is how to use some tools to do that. And so I'm going to start, of course, with, you know, my heritage. So if, if you're new to my heritage, you know, definitely check out the free trial. Uh, you know, hopefully maybe one of you will win that complete subscription today, but also you want, you know, 
you want to check out all the wonderful tools, especially if you get that you know premium membership and, and you start using MyHeritage on a daily basis. And so uh, the first thing I want to just talk about is if you're doing a DNA uh, test, so maybe you received a kit for Christmas or you're just, you know, getting into genealogy and a lot of us do start with DNA now. And I've, I've taken my heritage uh, DNA tests and I've uploaded some of my uh, results from other relatives with their permission, you know, went, uh, you know, uh, from other uh, companies, uh, you know, to, to get a, a more complete picture. And, and I like the MyHeritage DNA because I, I tend to connect with a lot of people because my ancestors were from Slovakia. And so um, with, with the, the, the European use, I really find that I, I make a lot of connections. And so I, I I like the ethnicities map, and so many of you might want to ex explore, you know, what that is. And so when you're on my heritage, you know, and you click the DNA tab, you get a lot of tools. And um, there's DNA matches, there's you know, ethnicity estimate. So a lot of us go for those DNA matches. But the um, ethnicity estimate, if you 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 want to click on that, you can get a, an idea of you know where your results are concentrated in. But uh, also the DNA tools. Uh, if you click on that, you'll 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 get to a screen that has a lot of wonderful tools. But uh, just a word about the ethnicity estimate. Um, you can click on that, and there's an explanation as to you know why you're getting certain ethnicities. And I am not a DNA expert by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I consider myself more of a newbie to DNA, even though I've had. Um, tests done and my relatives have been testing for a long time. I just find for me, it's a little, you know, harder to process and I'm sort of just feeling my way through. But I love all the different tools that my heritage offers because it gives us, you know, a different perspectives and different understanding. So, you know, I just like many of you, I'm feeling my way through all of them as well. But I, you know, I like looking at these maps and they change over time. So, and and mine have changed since I've taken the My Heritage DNA test. But um, when you click on those tools, uh, you know, you have your chromosome browser and your auto clusters, which I'm not going to talk about. But that ethnicities map, when you click on that, and you click the explore button, it gives you um, an interesting uh, summary of, of where your you know, DNA uh, results are concentrated. And so when you play that video, you, know, you go to the, the map and you can play the video, there's a little play button at the top. And uh, what you can do also is click on, on the right hand side, you see a, a little uh, set of tools and you can, you know, expand your screen, narrow it in, uh, but you can click on that little stacked icon and you can show your family tree events on your map, which is interesting. If you've built your tree in my heritage, then um, you can start seeing more information. But when you want to play the estimate, you just click play. And for me, uh, you know, things are pretty concentrated. I'm concentrating in, concentrated in Eastern Europe. Um, I do have a small percentage, you know, of, of Viking as well, but I have, you know, the Eastern European areas, it, that's where you'll find my, my ancestry. So when I click the play button, it just takes me through, um, you know, and I ask, I, and I click the, um, actually click the filters button and I, and it takes, it puts my family tree events. So I have a lot of them in the U S and, uh, this is just a sampling of, 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 of my ancestors, but I have my grandparents who were the immigrants. Then I have a lot of events in, you know, the Slovakia area. So when I click to play the video, it just kind of spins around and you, you hit let's go. And then it, it turns up this really nice spinning globe and then it breaks down your DNA. So um, as you can see, I have 41.5% Eastern European, 40% Balkan, um, 11% Scandinavian, 6% Baltic. So uh, my, my DNA, unfortunately, I don't know if it's fortunately or unfortunately, but it's, it's kind of boring. I mean, I haven't really found many surprises in my, my family history, um, with DNA, but I, I enjoy at least having my, 
a DNA sample in there and then I can connect with other relatives. So once you play the video, then you get you get back to your ethnicity estimate. So and then you can click on view full and you can get more detail. So that's one type of map that we can use with my heritage to kind of understand you know, our ethnicity and where our ancestors, you know, were concentrated. So you, your map may, may be all over the place. You may have a lot more uh, different results than I do, but that's just one type of map that we can use um, with the MyHeritage tools. Now there's a pedigree map as well. And so, uh, and that's what I want to talk a little bit about with, uh, the, the remaining time I have is the pedigree map and how to use that in conjunction with a few other mapping tools. So when you go to the, again, when you go to the MyHeritage homepage and you go under family tree, uh, there's this pedigree map that you can click on. And, uh, you know, there, there's just so much that you can explore. So I just want to mention that, you know, you really should take the time to explore all of the things under those top headings. Um, we tend to in genealogy, go for the search boxes or go for, you know, the easy things on a website. And I really think it's important that we look and see exactly what's available and, and, and do a little bit of exploring, you know, on our own so that we can really best use the site. But the pedigree map, you know, it's, I think it's pretty neat because it gives you a Google map and it, it lets you plot different events and different places in your uh, ancestors' lives. And so when you're in that pedigree map, there's a little funnel on the right-hand side that you click, and then that toggles on um, different features. Uh, you can also expand the screen to make it bigger. And then there's um, a couple of tools at the bottom where you can just show the places or you can show something called the heat map. And I'll show that slide in a minute. But what's really neat is when you when you click on all this, if you if you click on the funnel, bring up the different places. You can also click on the down arrow um, on the first box there, and that will bring up. You can show your extended family, your immediate family, your ancestors, and so I just I did extended family on this one, but I have a lot of places. So I have a lot of places in the U.S. Um, a lot of them are in are in Pittsburgh or in Pennsylvania. Um, uh, there's a couple in New York, that's mine because I live in Ithaca, New York. Uh, but I also have events, of course, in Europe and so, uh, you know, in, in Slovakia. So I can, you know, I can look at these, uh, different, you know, places and look at where, when, based on the information I've put in my family tree, where these events are taking place. And then, um, you know, you can, once you click on the um, filters, you can decide what to show. You can show photos. You can show uh, zero to three generations. You can show births, deaths, other events like immigration. So, and then you can use the slider for the date. So it's you know you can adjust it accordingly, and then you can uh, you know see exactly what you want to see at any particular time. So uh, you know want to you want to play around with those features. And then when you click on the heat map, you can um, get even, you know, you can get a, a concentration. So you can see this is where really I'm focusing my research. So it, it, it gives you kind of an idea of, you know, this is a hot spot for my genealogy. And, and so, as I mentioned, mine are in the Northeast in the United States. Most of my ancestors you know, lived in Pennsylvania, Ohio, et cetera. And then of course in Slovakia. So, you know, and you can, you know, plot all kinds of other places based on the events in your family tree. But that's just a, a very basic idea of, you know, how to use that. But one thing you can also do is you can narrow in on places. So sometimes when you add places to your family tree and, and you, you, you pick up places in this pedigree map, sometimes you may get like a little warning sign and maybe that the place isn't matched exactly. And then there's a way to edit that and you just, um, you know, click and put the correct in place in. And I, I had that in two instances in my family tree. Uh, my aunt died in, in, in Texas, but for some reason it was picking out a cemetery in Oklahoma. So I could go in and, and correct that, you know, cause it's all based on these Google maps. 
But if you click on um, the, the box at the top, there it says find a place. So if I really wanted to focus in, say, on where my my paternal grandfather was born and where he lived until he immigrated um, in uh, 1910, he uh, he came to the United States. He left before you know his uh, you know 17th birthday. And so if I type in Kuchin, Slovakia, this is, you know, in my family tree, then I get a closer map. And, um, you know, this charts his event, you know, his his birth. And um, I have a picture of him in my family tree. So it brings in the picture because I say sh show photo. And then there's, you know, this little map that I can expand on or narrow in. And it, it kind of shows, you know, different roads and different places in and around Kuchin. And so I can then, you know, narrow in and use that Google map, you know, to pinpoint places. And, and that, that really uh, helps. And, and one thing that this does in genealogy, so, you know, you're looking for landmarks on these, on these maps. And, and that kind of gives you an indication of, you know, what might still be there and what you can use. So for example, on this map, if I, if I, go in a little closer, I can see that they've marked um, where the, the church is. And the, so I, when I, you know, I can click on that and kind of narrow in, but I've actually physically been to this church. I've been there several times. This photo uh, was taken in 2012. And this is my cousin, uh, my first cousin. And uh, uh, he, he and I, he was actually my God, he's actually my godfather. We went and we met family in Kuchin, and we actually sat in front of the baptismal font where our grandfather was baptized. And so that was a really special moment uh, for, you know, for us. And, you know, it, it, it's just a beautiful church and, you know, connecting with family, really being able to walk in the footsteps of my grandfather was just an amazing experience. And so, you know, when you're, you know, when you're doing these, uh, you know, mapping tools, you know, as I mentioned, there's Google, Google Maps. And so that leads, you know, when you're using the pedigree map, that can lead you into even more uh, mapping tools capabilities. And so I want to talk a little bit about that. So we talked about the Google Map. And if you've used Google Maps recently, or, you know, even in the past, um, you know that they have this marvelous thing called Street View. And, you know, I'm always amazed when I use Google that, you know, I can, even in remote villages in Slovakia now, it seems, I can actually go there and kind of do a virtual walking tour. Now, not every place is included right now in such detail, but it's getting better. I know that I've used Google Maps for a while, and I'm always amazed at how much detail there is and how the, the technology is improving. But the street view, and you know, when you do Google Street View, I can actually, you know, walk the streets of Kuchin, the roads that I actually did in person. <laughs> and so it's amazing, uh, you know, when you when you go into the map, you just take your little person and drop them into wherever the Street View is available, and you can just kind of take a virtual walk around. And uh, I, I was really impressed because I was just on this recently, and I I saw how much it's changed. Um, even in the last couple of years. And so um, this is a, an excellent way to kind of get familiar with an ancestral village uh, or town, you know, before you visit, or if you can't visit for some reason, that that is a really great way to just get a sense of what the place is like today. And um, there's even a, a, a modern day view of the uh, church there in Kuchin. And uh, when I went in 2012, it was painted this very bright yellow, and um, so then they they've you know done some renovations and done some changes there, and so I can you know I can and I can actually with the um, the 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 Google Street I can actually go in somebody even up we have there's photos there inside the church and I can even sort of walk virtually inside the church which is really cool so. You know, these these mapping tools are just really useful and, and they just give you a sense of, of 
what life was like for our ancestors. And probably many of you have used Google Earth as well. And that's, you know, even more powerful. Um, there's so much uh, capability with Google Earth, you know, satellite views and narrowing in and doing close-ups. And, you know, you can just fly anywhere in the world uh, and, you know, just tour places where your ancestors lived. And again, they update this all the time. It improves all the time. And there's just so much to it. But, you know, the other things you can do is you can... Uh, see other features on Google Earth. And, uh, and sometimes people do things like adding photographs in. And this is another example of one of my ancestral villages, uh, Milposh, where my maternal grandmother was baptized. And she, uh, she immigrated in 1922. But what's really neat is anywhere you see little images, you can click on and see these different pictures of uh, churches or other uh, historic photos. And so this is um, really neat because this is the Greek Catholic Church and Cemetery in Milpotia. And that's where I, I visited that in 2010. And, uh, but it's just amazing. Um, you know, people, you can add and customize and do virtual tours. You can create your own on Google Earth. And there's a, there's a lot of uh, ways to, to really make it your own. Uh, and and there are a lot of great tutorials on Google Earth, uh, you know, in, in the program and and elsewhere. But uh, I I think it's a marvelous tool for uh, understanding ancestral ties, ancestral you know villages, migration, you know, places that your ancestors lived. We always talk about researching the collaterals and lines and the clusters of our ancestors. So the friends, associates, neighbors or what's called the fan club. And so by, by being able to map things out and see things visually and even see buildings and cemeteries and, and churches and archives and, and, and all these historic places, it really does enhance your research. And we should always be just going beyond the names, dates, and places in our family tree. We should always look at that social history and bring in other things like historic photographs and maps. So we really get a sense of what life was like for our ancestors. And so one last thing that I, I want to, to talk about uh, that has to do with Google. And so if you have a Google account, you can uh, easily uh, do this, but I um, created something called Google My Map and it's a personalized map so it's mymaps.google.com. And so basically you can, you know, use uh, some basic templates, base maps. So wherever you're based, mine ha I shows the United States for mine, but you can select from all these different base maps that they have. And you can, you know, import, uh, you can import certain data, you can add uh, layers and, you know, you can create your own customized map. And what I did was, as I mentioned, when I used the pedigree map of my heritage, I, you, I, you know, showed you Kuchin, where my grandfather came from. And uh, so I created a Google My Map um, for his migration. And um, so I've added things in like the church images uh, for Kuchin. Uh, he you know, sailed through uh, the port of Hamburg, Germany. He arrived in Ellis Island. So I plot these um, historic places on the map. Uh, he then lived for a time at South Linden Street in Duquesne, Pennsylvania. He was a boarder there. And so I, you know, I was able to kind of trace his mig migration. He worked at the U.S. Steel Duquesne plant. So I put all of these as, as different um, places different pins on my Google My Map. And then when you click on edit, you can, um, you know, edit the different points and you can add things in. But I really like doing this because I could see all the different events in my family tree in a visual format. And it's sort of like a visual timeline. And so um, there's the edit box and I can type a description and I can add different uh, layers and styles to this. And then what I did is I added 
symbolic photos. So for the cooch and I added the church. Um, I my grandparents were married in Duquesne. And so um, I added things like a, a small an image of their marriage license. Uh, and and then I, you know, I was able to pinpoint it right at the church using a modern day Google Earth on the map. And it's it's just amazing the things that you can you can plot on here. And so uh, back in March of 2017, I wrote an article for Internet Genealogy magazine on using Google My Maps. Uh, it's the technology's improved, of course, since that time. So you know the the base ideas of it are the same, but uh, you know they've changed, of course, and things have improved with the the technology. But I really like it because I can add things and I can customize them to my ancestors, and and then the maps are stored right in my Google Drive account, so I can access them right through my Google Drive. So. It's, uh, you know, that's just a, a little tool that you can use. Uh, you start off with your family tree, use the pedigree map, then you can expand into Google and do even more with your family history. So maps, you know, have so many wonderful uses for our genealogy. And I just, you know, I really think that the more we use them, the, the better we will understand why our ancestors made certain decisions, why, you know, what happened historically to, to push them from the places where they lived, or maybe they even stayed. And, and you know, you can, you can learn a lot by just researching the place and understanding the sense of place. And it's also helpful, you know, because like when I do research in Eastern Europe, you know, all the borders have changed so many times and, and, and so it's it's just really important to understand where to find the records today and where what things were like historically you know even things like you know was your ancestor church in the next village did they have to travel uh, to you know to go to church or to you know have a child baptized etc so it's 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 very useful to to plot these kind of maps for your genealogy research so I also just, as we kind of wrap up here, I just want to say that, you know, with my heritage, you know, to get started, you know, you really want to build that tree, you know, even a basic family tree with as much as you know, and then, you know, the my heritage help, the my heritage knowledge base, and the ask, ask the expert series will teach you, you know, whatever you need to know. Um, in addition to all these Facebook lives that my heritage does, but if you go under the help at the top of your account there, you can pull down help center, knowledge base, and, and other features. And so you want to really do that, really kind of understand the tool, um, you know, as you use it. And, and as they make changes, you know, follow along and understand, you know, what, what to do with, with each feature. And so the help center, of course, you know, has a lot of information. Uh, the DNA kits, ethnicity estimate, if you want to know more about that, you know, there's many, many more categories there. Uh, but all, you know, always read the directions. That's one of my biggest tips, because I think sometimes as genealogists, we say, oh, I have a brick wall. Oh, I can't, you know, find this or that. And I, you know, I think a lot of times brick walls are really, they're really just research challenges. And maybe we haven't, looked for every record that we need to look for, or maybe we have, we don't understand what pushed our ancestors or, or what motivated them. And once we understand the why, then we can, you know, find the records. And, you know, that's, of course, you know, we know that records, some records have been lost, some have been destroyed, but I think it's important to read the directions, no matter what you're doing, whether you're using a new database, you know, trying to understand an archive, Always go and look for the help, the frequently asked questions, and any other uh, tutorials that, that that database has because we are, you know, we want it now. We want to type our ancestors' names in and magically have them appear. And I think sometimes we just need to take a step back and understand what it is that we're using. And so that's why I like to use the MyHeritage Knowledge Base. 
you know, you can type in what you want to learn about, or you can use those categories. If you're trying to figure out what to do on your family tree or use the new photo tools or use the databases or use the DNA. Uh, there's, there's an answer there. And I, I find it to be one of the best help sections out there for uh, how to use a database or how to use a, a sub subscription site. And then, of course, the Ask the Expert series. And again, I wasn't going to reinvent the wheel here in this presentation because you can go on and watch Daniel Horowitz present on the, met, the pedigree map. And he gives you a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to do that. And so that's that's really a great resource, especially for those of you who are getting started. Some of you may be already be doing this and you may be you know, experts at using maps and Google Earth. <clears throat> but I hope that I've given you some ideas for your own uh, research. And again, don't forget to use those Ask the Experts. So uh, that really summarizes what I wanted to focus in on this morning. It's a kind of a short and sweet presentation today, uh, but I uh, just wanted to give you some tips and tools uh, to help you better understand your ancestors and help you in your research. So uh, you, as always, you can feel free to contact me through my website, lisaalzo.com. I have a newsletter that you can sign up for uh, and you can link to my online course site through my website as well. So uh, thank you very much. And um, you know, I'm ready to take some questions. Okay. That was really, really helpful. And I think such great tips and advice. And, and uh, Lisa, I just loved what you said about um, oftentimes a brick wall is actually just a research difficulty and that you just need to know where to look to find to find the answer to find the, the the way out of that of that situation and and I think that that's so true in so many cases and and there are so many resources out there for for all of our viewers here <laughs> absolutely just a matter of knowing where to where to turn so and and here at my heritage of course we're always trying to to add more of those, um, you know, tools to help you find find the answers. Just like uh, I'm sure you saw, Lisa. Although you're a a professional genealogist, but we recently came out with a um, an online course for genealogy, uh, more geared towards beginners, but also towards people who uh, haven't used MyHeritage so much in the past, and you know, are looking to learn more about our tools and features. So that's another tool out there uh, for all of our viewers. Um, I see so many comments here just thanking you and just saying how, how useful this was and how much they learned. So that that is just so nice to see. Uh, and a lot of great comments uh, for our draw, which we'll do as soon as uh, the questions are over. First, we'll take a couple questions. So I see I see a question here from Elaine and she says, is there any um, are there any helpful tools to learn how to use Map my Google? Oh, uh, oh, so Google My Maps, there, there's a great tutorial on Google. If you just go to that, you know, that feature, um, there's always a help button uh, in, in any of the Google products. Um, I also will say that if you're really interested in really using Google Earth, um, Lisa Louise Cook has some fantastic tutorials uh, via, you know, her website. You know, she does the Genealogy Gems podcast but she she does a lot with google tools and google earth and she's sort of my de facto expert when i when it comes to using uh google i just kind of dabble in it um, but i find that her tutorials are very easy to follow and so you can certainly check out lisa's website um i i do i highly recommend those tutorials uh, for especially for google earth as i said google my maps is pretty easy to use and the the online help at Google is is pretty sufficient. Um, also, if you if you want to get a copy of the article I wrote, you can all you can order back issues of Internet Genealogy Magazine uh, through their website. Oh, fantastic! That's good to know. Uh, we have a question here from Josiah who asks. Uh, Lisa, have you found some old historic photos from the places where your ancestors lived? Um, if yes, were you able to upload them onto that map? I have found historic photos. Um, I have 
I, I uploaded a couple. Uh, and one thing is I, I, I actually, I, I actually am pretty lucky as a genealogist. I, I do have some, some really old, you know, family photographs, not from all sides of my family, but some, some, some historic photos from some time periods. And I've actually, I've been doing a lot with the My Heritage tools to try to, I've been scanning them and trying to, you know, repair them and colorize them. And if anybody has done this, you know what a big job it is. I mean, I have boxes and boxes of photos. And so I'm, I wow. bought a new scanner and I'm, I'm slowly going through, but I have found other historic photos as well, you know, just from, you know, different places, uh, you know, different collections. So, you know, it's, it's really great to, to do that. And you can, yeah, once you scan them, once you have them digitized, the only thing I will, um, you know, um, you know, just say is that, you know, you, you just, I try to be more. I try to do, be more selective in what I put. I don't want to clutter up the map, so I, you know, I'll, I'll do different kinds of maps for different types of things that I'm trying to show or, or, or research. Not to make it too busy. Exactly. Right. But yes, I have to answer you know, the actual question. Real, yeah, have I found them? Yes, I have found. <laughs> Um, and this is a good point actually to mention because uh, this week we are offering, we are still offering all of our photo tools unlimited and free. Uh, sorry, not all of our photo tools, but the photo, uh, My Heritage in Color, which colorizes your photo, the photo repair, um, the My Heritage photo enhancer, and um, so some really great and useful photo tools that typically uh, basic users will get only a limited amount of uses for each one. And uh, until February 5th, it is unlimited use and free. So it's a good opportunity. Uh, although it's a big project, as you said, Lisa, it's a good, a good chance for those of you with uh, basic MyHeritage accounts to take advantage of these photo tools now and to scan in those old photos and uh, make use of my heritage in color, the my heritage uh, photo repair, and the my heritage photo enhancer. I'll, I'll make a comment, Esther. Um, some of my photos have been, you know, in kind of bad condition, and and I was pretty amazed at how the restoration um, came out with the tools, and and also, what, you know, I know I know some people. Don't, you know, they don't want to touch historic photos, don't colorize them. But I can tell you that by doing it, I've I've been able to really narrow in on details in some of my old, old ancestral photos. And it really, you know, brings out the faces and the backgrounds. And I it, I get a better sense of what what might have been going on in that picture. So I would definitely, I just would tell anybody take advantage of this this time to use those tools as much as you can uh and you know i for me it's just i i really enjoy you know getting those details from my ancestors definitely you know i i think uh, we asked our users today and in this session even for stories of discoveries and and one of the answers i saw um i saw up above that one of the users one of our viewers wrote in and said you know they just discovered all these details in the photo that they hadn't seen before uh and i love hearing those stories just because it makes such a difference you know and, and obviously it doesn't replace the original of course uh and it's saved separate and you know we make sure to save the original and it does not override uh the the authenticity of the original photo but uh but it can add so much to it and really you know just just teach you so much about about life back then and what was going on mm -hmm. which is incredible uh so we'll just take one last question if that's okay lisa that's uh, we have a question here from Catherine, and she asks what are some sources for old photos from our ancestors places of origin well, that's, that's really interesting. I start with Google, you know, and you can do Google image searching. You can also, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, archives have photos, you know, there's just a lot of, of sites out there. Uh, you know, Library of Congress has a free photo site and, you know, they have picked, they have a lot of different types of pictures. So they have um, photo collections, you know, you can look on Flickr, <laughs> uh, sometimes too, um, or, you know, you know, a simple search, but there, you know, again, there's a lot of, you know, historic 
websites. And, and, and a lot of times I Google my ancestral village and then a lot of times I'll find like a history or I'll find photos that people have uploaded or shared. And also in Facebook um, pages and groups, uh, I belong to a lot of, uh, in fact, for my grandfather's village of Austernia, I belong to this fantastic Facebook group and they've uh, people have, have posted a lot of historic photos and also some really beautiful photos recently um, of the church there. Um, just absolutely fantastic. Of course, you want to ask permission if it's somebody else's photo, but you might be able to find, you know, the source or um, maybe they've uh, published a book about the ancestral village. Uh, and maybe they have, there's a repository, an archive or a museum there that you can contact. Um, again, you know, a lot of times if it's just for your own personal family history, sometimes, you know, people are, are, are you know, okay with sharing. So you just, ha you know, you have to always watch the copyright. But again, you have to understand copyright law in all the different countries and places and, and know, you know, when when it's you know safe to use when it's in the public domain but there you know i would just start with a google search and you know uh narrow it down to you know your location and just see what pops up because there's there's a lot of uh different websites and different repositories that you can come across okay so uh now it's our pleasure to be able to give away my heritage complete plan to one lucky viewer in the audience so thank you to everyone who wrote in and it's incredible seeing your stories and hearing about your successes using my heritage and we wish you all many more future <laughs> successes breaking down those brick walls and using all the tools available to, uh, to you to make new discoveries uh, on my heritage, off my heritage, <laughs> um, but all together. And um, and we wish you a lot of luck in connecting with new family and new relatives. And our winner today is Paula Garcia. And Paula wrote to us and she said, I was able to find a third cousin for my adopted daughter. I'm hoping to get a little bit closer to her biological dad. So that's a really, really lovely story and something so special that you were able to do for her. And uh, thank you for sharing that with us, Paula. We'll be in touch with you through private message to claim your prize. Uh, for anyone in the audience who came in in the middle or who wants to rewatch part of today's session, you can rewatch it on the My Heritage Facebook page under the videos section. And you can also check out uh, all our previous sessions. We've had Lisa for a number of sessions, as well as many other experts and guests here uh, on our Facebook Lives. So feel free to check any of them out. So Lisa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me and thanks everyone for watching and good luck with mapping uh, your ancestors' places. Yes, good luck everyone and have a great day.